Alliance of Theories, uh, Leo Isakuzo Magora uh, from the Barrier Answer Initiative. So I'm the team lead uh, and we're currently working on our first project which we call the Biosoft 1.0. So to highlight the problem to you, Mbara which is home to 40,000 households in Zimbabwe is over the years depended on electricity as their primary source of cooking energy. However, the past decade has been marked by uh, rampant tariff hikes as well as 18-hour uh, daily blackouts, forcing these residents to look for cooking energy alternatives. However, looking on the market, LPG, which is definitely the next best alternative, is exorbitant and costly for them to afford. Hence, this puts stress on the firewood and its derivative charcoal. But however, the push for using firewood and charcoal for cooking has resulted in forest laws pushing the government to ban use of these resources and actually arrest the people caught trading in these items, which have created uh, cooking shortages in the market, leaving 40% of the residents prone to missing one in three meals due to cooking energy shortages. So we went on and we talked to Alice with a vendor and a single mother of three, and she earns $50 per month and she has to work from as early as 8 a.m. in the morning to as late as 8 p.m. in a bid to maximize the revenues. But all she needs is an affordable, fast and efficient cooking energy solution that will enable her to cook early and rush to the market and also cook late in the evening for her children when she comes from work and gain ample time to rest. So we realize that 44 million households across the bubble are actually suffering from this cooking energy deficiency. So we went on and realized that in Mbare, Mbare standing alone generates five tons of organic waste per day and all this ends in landfill. So we asked ourselves, what if we could turn this organic waste into cooking energy? Thus we came up with the bio which will enable cooking energy autonomy as well as affordability. So this is the design that we came up with for the bio So it will take in household waste, then we'll mix it with the, our bio catalyst and put it inside. Then it will produce biogas, which will project to, if we successfully do our experiments very well, five plus cooking hours on as little as three kgs of cooking uh, of waste. So we'll produce our bio stoves and the bio catalysts from our main plant, then supply them to retailers, from which households can make a once off purchase of the bio stove, followed by regular purchases of the bio catalyst, depending on their rate of gas consumption. So we went on to analyze the cooking energy industry in Zimbabwe. So we realized that um, first on the list is LOPG, which is despite being readily available in the market, it's unaffordable to the majority. Next in the list is electricity. Electricity is both unavailable and unaffordable. So we went on to the third, which is charcoal and firewood. These are abundant in the market. Like these are affordable in the market, sorry, but however, they are now scarce. So, this leaves the biosol as one container that has the potential to be both affordable and available. There have been products that have been developed that have the similar concept. So, the concept has been developed by a company called Home Biogas, which is in Israel. But this company, this their Home Biogas kit is very costly, it costs $1,000 to acquire it. So, it makes it not scalable for the Zimbabwean economy. So, we are targeting the 4 million households across Zimbabwe, but specifically due to the proximity of our potential target market, we are targeting Mbare, which has 40,000 households. Then, reaching our customers, we intend to use our cash campaigns as well as ambassadors plus websites and social media to reach out to our customers to educate and raise awareness. So, this has been our journey so far. So we started in February 2022. We did our needs assessments, talked to the people, ideated and went down and set. From there, we now came to the process that we started in July with the aid of the D-Lab, which gave us resources to start on experimenting, to test some of the hypotheses that we had. How do they turn out when it comes to actually doing it? So this is the stage that we are currently doing but from here our hope is that come december 2022 we are launching the bus of into market for our first pilot so this is how the journey has been going for us so 
with the, the resources we got from DLAB, we set out to do our experiments in July and August. We expected a smooth flow of our theory, but however, life taught us the hard way. So we had some assumptions that we had. We built our setup so because we had time constraints, we wanted to build our MVP so that we could show you today. So we had to set five experiments at the same time so that we could catch up with the time. But however, there's something that we neglected. The temperatures were so low, as you can see, this is the temperature that is here. Of which for us to generate biogas, we need 37 degrees optimum temperature. So this let us down because we had to wait for 28 days, hoping that our experiments would work, but they couldn't. However, we talked with our team after we realized that this didn't work. So we realized that there is one feature we actually have to add to our biostove which is a lesson that we learned. So the bias of design that we are currently working on now is insulated, meaning to say we'll kick it started with water at our required temperature, then it won't lose that heat and facilitate the reaction to happen. So this is what we have learned. We also went on to build our team. So over the months we have been working with the Junin Japan, the Queen's Innovation Center from Canada from February up until August. They have helped us through our ideation and developing our project as a whole. So we also formed our team, which is comprised of myself as the team lead uh, and permanent team member. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering student, and I'm also passionate about bioengineering and how we can leave, leverage synthetic biology into creating solutions that can solve some of the problems that we have. But I also have my co-team team member, Matimba Mabonda, who is a Master's of Chemical Engineering graduate from UCT, as well as he's a founder of Matimba Biofuels. And we really believe with this team, the biosoap will reach the market, enabling 24-7 cooking energy autonomy by the end of 2027. Thank you so much. Okay, so... To answer that one, so number one, when you put it in, you close, it's airtight. So it means no, no air is going to come back to you. But then, yeah, at some point, you are going to have to open it and empty it and stuff. So, so here's the consideration. So this bias of weight, we have attached everything on it, but I was, it's something that we are still figuring out when we deploy it into the market.